Hey guys, it's Music Tech Help Guy, and today I am checking out the Logic Keyboard. This is the Astra series of keyboards, and uh, this company actually makes uh, shortcut keyboards. They're backlit shortcut keyboards. They're specialty keyboards for pretty much every DAW imaginable. So they do this for Logic, Pro Tools, Studio One, Cubase, Adobe Audition, Ableton Live, and others. I've actually been using this keyboard as my daily driver keyboard for about the last three months. And I'm really impressed with it. It's really helpful to have all of your shortcuts right there in front of you. And you know, I've been using Logic for a long time. I think I'm relatively experienced with it. I think I would say I'm a, a, prof, a pro level user of Logic, but you still forget some of your shortcuts every once in a while. So I think this is great for anyone who's, uh, you know, maybe not just beginners, but anyone who just wants to be able to look down and see all of their shortcuts right in front of them. These are great for like educational institutions, anything that's being taught in a classroom. Um, so there's a lot of applications for this and it's just an all around great keyboard. So um, in this video, I'm just gonna kind of give you an overview of the features, how I've liked it, and how I've used it in my setup for the last three months. So let's get right into it. Now, as I mentioned before, this is the Astra line of keyboards from Logic Keyboard. The company actually offers several different options for audio, video, and graphic design. And even just for Logic, they offer two different keyboard options the Alba keyboard in white and silver, a very Apple aesthetic, and the Astra keyboard, which I chose because I have an all black desk. So it was just an aesthetic choice for me personally. Also, the Astra keyboard is backlit, so you can see it much better in dim lighting. And they also make keyboard skins, so you can put these on your MacBook or existing Apple keyboard. Next, let's go over the features. Each key is labeled with both its single key press shortcut as well as its modifier key shortcut. So for example, C will toggle the cycle range, but option C will pull up the color palette. F will show and hide the media area, but command F will toggle flex time. K will toggle the metronome, but command K pulls up the musical typing keyboard. And these are just a few examples. And it's also been helpful to rediscover some shortcuts that I've forgotten about. For example, if you pull up some plugin windows and then press V, this will hide the plugin windows, but then press V again, and it'll show all of those plugin windows again. So this is incredibly helpful if you're jumping back and forth between editing and mixing work. Another one I forgot about is how easy it is to jump between markers in Logic. If I create a marker for verse one, then the chorus, then verse two, then the second chorus, then the bridge, et cetera, et cetera, now I can just use the number pad to quickly jump between these markers. In terms of IO, you connect it to your Mac with dual USB connectors. However, only one of these is used to control and power the keyboard. The other one is just a pass through for the two additional USB ports on the keyboard. This is great for hooking up dongles and eye locks and hard drives without having to reach around the back of the desk or reach around your computer. But if you don't need to use the USB ports on the keyboard, you can simply skip this additional USB plug and hook up the keyboard with a single USB connector. In terms of comfort, it's way more comfortable to type on than using an Apple keyboard or a MacBook keyboard. These tend to have this super flat minimal design which I totally get if you're trying to reduce the overall size of a MacBook or conform to the same flat, sleek Apple aesthetic. But in my opinion, they're not entirely comfortable to work with. Now, with that said, the Logic Keyboard isn't a gaming keyboard either. You're not getting big, chunky, satisfying key switches like your family computer from the 90s. But it's sort of a compromise. It's sort of an in-between. The keys have more depth to them, they're bigger and have more weight to them than most laptop keyboards these days, but in a form factor that isn't chunky and bulky. So I find it very comfortable to type on, even when I'm not using it for Logic. Now there's only two downsides of this keyboard and they're pretty minor. One is that Logic's already had two updates in the past year, versions 10.5 and 10.6, both which introduced some new features, working with live loops and the step sequencer and some new key commands. So these new key commands are not gonna be on this keyboard, but honestly, that's it's a really minor thing. 
There was also a weird electronic smell coming from the keyboard when I first plugged it in. The smell kind of lingered for about a week and then it was gone. So after three months of using the keyboard, the smell is gone and there's nothing functionally wrong with the keyboard. It must just be something with turning on the LEDs for the first time for the backlighting. But overall, I very much enjoy using this keyboard. I'd recommend it to anyone and it'll continue to be my daily driver for my home workstation. All right, guys, so that's the Logic Keyboard. If you guys wanna check this out for yourself, you can head over to logickeyboard.com and I'll leave a link in the video description below. If you guys like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.